So here we're going to talk about the octanol water partitioning coefficient, which is probably not something that you've heard about before. Um, the shorthand is just KOW. So what is it? It is essentially just the concentration of a chemical in octanol, which is a nonpolar sol solvent, over the concentration of that same chemical in water, which as we now know is a polar solvent. And it's the molar concentration in general, so moles per liter. So how do, how do we figure this out? It's done in the lab. You can see here in this glass, you've got octanol floating on top. It doesn't dissolve in the water. There are two different layers. Water on the bottom. So you mix up your chemical in sort of a, in this mix of octanol and water. And then once everything that's going to go into the octanol has gone there and everything that's going to dissolve in the water has gone there, you put the amount the concentration in the octanol over the concentration in the water and you get your KOW. So this is when the system is at, equilibri at equilibrium. That is, the chemical concentrations in the octanol and the water are constant. That's what you use to get to the KOW. So the range is really large. It's um, from a very small value, 10 to the negative third to 10 to the positive 7, a very large number. So most people report this as log KOW. So in this case, 10 to the negative 3 would just be 3. 10 to the positive 7 would just be 7. And this is how you see it reported in, for example, the EPA fact sheets, if you were to go look up a chemical um, or a pollutant at the EPA website. So if you have a nonpolar substance, it's going to go mainly into the octanol, the nonpolar solvent. So you're going to have a big number up here and a small number down here, because not much of it will have gone into the water. So you're going to have a really large KOW. If you have a polar substance, it's going to go mainly into the water. So this number is going to be very large. And this number on the top will be very small. There won't be much in the octanol. So you'll have a small KOW. OK, so this is a picture of sort of a what looks like a hydrocarbon dissolved in octanol and water. So would you expect this molecule to have a high or low KOW? So you can think about that for a moment, maybe pause. OK, it would be high. So clearly here you've got a nonpolar substance, much more of it in the octanol than in the water. So you've got a big number on top for your KOW calculation and a small number on the bottom. So it's going to be high. And you can think about this also in terms of water solubility. So this is not a very water soluble substance. OK, here are some examples. We've got melathion, which is an organophosphorus insecticide. It's relatively water soluble. Compared to DDT, which is an organochlorine insecticide um, of some fame, really low water solubility, which you can see. And then what you see here is that the water soluble substance, it's a little more polar has a lower log KOW than the nonpolar, non-water soluble substance has a much higher log KOW. So what does all this mean anyway? Why do we even care about the log KOW? And that's what we're going to talk about here. So this is something that's relatively easy to use in the lab and has been done, done for a large number of pollutants. So it's something that we have a lot of data for. So we use it to predict will a pollutant go into water or will it go into solids? So what kind of solids might we be interested in? So say you're in a lake, you might be interested in how much of that is going to go in the water, how much of it is going to go into the sediments of the lake. So it's used to predict how much is going to go in the water. And in general, if you have a low KOW, it's a polar substance, most of it's going to be in the water. If you have a high KOW, a nonpolar substance, you'd expect more of it, less of it to be in the water, more of it to be in soil, sediments, or organic matter. Now it's also used to predict bioaccumulation, which normally happens or usually happens with nonpolar chemicals. They tend to accumulate in organisms in fats, which is where the nonpolar chemicals like to be. So a high KOW, you've got a nonpolar substance. It's not really going to be in the water or really the environment very much. It's going to be inside the organisms in that fatty tissue. 
Okay, so that is KOW, what it is sort of defined, and then what people use it for to figure out whether a chemical is going to go into water or whether it's going to be in solids and fatty tissue.